Jalen Brunson could just be the NBA's next number one point guard. Obviously, just the other night, he put up an insane 61-point game against the Spurs, making his career high and also moving up to second on the Knicks' all-time single-game scoring record. He was absolutely destroying that Spurs defense the entire night. I think the first thing to start off with is how dangerous he is in pick and rolls. He's so patient coming off of screens and getting comfortably to a spot every single time. He's one of the best pick and roll guys in the entire league. And then he killed the Spurs defense in isolations. When we talk about the best 1v1 players in the league, he's got to be near the top of that conversation. In this entire year, he has been absolutely nuclear, averaging nearly 28 points on 48% shooting from the floor and 40% shooting from deep. And he's right there in that category of being a great quote-unquote ethical bucket getter. In that I mean he's not hunting for fouls and getting bailed out by refs. The buckets he get are just straight, clean, efficient buckets. And what I love is that we've already seen multiple times that he can do all of this in the postseason. It's not one of those things where he's just been great during the regular season. No, he's shown the ability to do all of this in the playoffs. Last year in the playoffs, for example, he averaged pretty much the same as he is now during the regular season, putting up 27.8 points on 47% shooting. And the year before that in Dallas, which was kind of his breakout year, he put up 21 points in the playoffs next to Luka. And he just generally had one one of the best stories of the last couple of seasons. When it was time for him to leave Dallas when he became a free agent back in 2022, a lot of teams, including the Mavericks, were pretty reluctant to pay him big money. And I think that was because they weren't 100% sure if he was worth that money, if he was a franchise-level guy. Dallas's uncertainty with that investment led to a back and forth between Brunson's camp and the front office. And ultimately, the Knicks, who were in need of a franchise player, swooped in with a big-time offer, which at that time looked like a gamble and Brunson accepted. The reason it was a gamble was simple. The Knicks were betting a ton on him, $104 million over four years to be exact, to be the cornerstone piece next to Julius Randle. And at that time, a lot of people weren't sure if he was ready to take that leap with that type of role, especially in a market like New York where there's so much scrutiny. But as we see now, that turned out to be one of the best gambles a team could take. And not only has Brunson been the perfect fit next to Randle, but he's actually solidified himself as their best player. Last season, it was a question who the number one guy was between them two, especially with Randle being voted as an all-star while JB was left off. But now it's clear. This is JB's team. The squad goes as far as he takes them, and things should be super interesting for this Knicks group come playoff time. Once Randall and OG are back in the lineup, the ceiling for this squad is so high, especially considering how great they are from a two-way standpoint and how deep their roster is. So as April starts rolling around, let's see how strong this Knicks group can close things out and how far they can get once the tough Eastern Conference playoffs get started.